Hi everyone, my name's Connor McDonald. Follow me on Twitter for information about SQL and analytics. And today is the next in our series of the KISS principle, keep it simple with SQL, focusing on analytics. These are short two minute sessions designed at solving real world problems, not just wandering through the syntax. In this session, we're gonna look at more windowing functions, the things we introduced in the last session. Quick recap from the last session, key point number one on aggregation, it's calculated, not restrictive, which means even though we're doing aggregation of data, we still get one row per row in the original result table. Key point number two was that there were two types of aggregation. There was reporting aggregation, which gave us the same aggregate for each row in a partition. For example, we look here, when we do some salary partition by department number, we get the same row for each department, department 20 in the case that's highlighted. And there was windowing aggregation, our introduction to the windowing clause, which was the changing aggregate for each row in a partition. And here's an example of the first windowing clause from the previous session. We did a rows between unbounded preceding and current row. And as you can see, as we move down each row, the column values in the tot column changed for each value, running down to our grand total there of 340 million square kilometers of ocean. Here's the next window clause example, so we can continue doing lots of examples to get the expertise with it. We're going to sum the ocean data across three rows by the type of water region. Let's look at how we build this up with an analytic. First of all, we're once again summing up the square kilometers of ocean. This time we have a partition clause because the requirement said partition it by each particular type of ocean. We have a sorting clause as before. This time, remember the statement was across three rows. What that means from a windowing perspective is look one row back, look one row forward, and obviously the current row makes up the total of three rows. So we can take that, insert it into our SQL, and here's a result coming out in the column called three row. Let's see how it's built up. The first row, Pacific Ocean, well, when we go to look one row preceding, there obviously is no row preceding the Pacific Ocean. It's the largest one with the square kilometers, and we're ordering by square kilometers descending. So there's nothing before. There is the current row for Pacific Ocean, 155 million square kilometers, and Atlantic Ocean. When we add those three together, one of them being null, we get 232 million, and there's our result in the three row table. As we move to the next row, we can once again, we scan the current row, look back one row, look forward one row, proceeding and following as per the syntax, and we get 300 million. And we continue on down the table. When we get to the next row, notice that I'm not looking forward anymore. Why is that? Well, we're partitioning by type. I have effectively run out of ocean. I've now moved on to the sea in terms of the water region type. So I can't go any more forward. So for the Arctic Ocean being the last ocean, it has the current row, it has the preceding row, but there is no following row. So just like the Pacific Ocean had no preceding row, the Arctic Ocean had no following row, and therefore we get the 34 million. That's the partition range there highlighted in blue. You can run this script for yourself to see how the windowing works. The next session will continue doing more windowing examples to gain more and more expertise. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, keep it simple with SQL. We'll see you all again soon.